Good morning, today. Today, today, today. Often, in physics, students have questions with whether to use negative 9.8 meters per second squared or 9.8 meters per second squared in questions involving the kinematic equations. So today our goal is to understand when we use negative 9.8 versus positive 9.8. So let's commence operations. If you're following along in our table of contents here, previous videos have been posted related to these topics. Today, specifically, we're going to examine gravity along with the kinematic equations. These equations were discussed in a previous video. These equations are only valid, these five equations that is, when the acceleration is constant. As a reminder, to use any of these five equations, you always need three variables. These equations are, can also be written in this format. These symbols are used by the IB physics curriculum. All right, so let's just get to a question. You are on top of a tower and spot a purple dinosaur at the foot of it. Having seen one too many purple dinosaur shows on TV, you decide to start dropping pennies to give him a scare. If the penny is dropped from a height of 450 meters and there is no air resistance, what is the velocity the penny will hit the ground with? So you've missed the target and you're hitting the ground. All right, for starters, you're dropping these pennies off of a tower. It must be a very tall tower. The height is 450 meters. So we start off, that's our displacement. The displacement is 450 meters down. And notice I've highlighted down. That's very important in today's discussion. The acceleration. First of all, why are we choosing 9.8? Well, key to this question is that it says there's no air resistance. When there is no air resistance, when there is no drag, then the acceleration near the surface of the Earth will always be 9.8 meters per second per second. Now, here's the question that students always ask. How do we know to choose positive 9.8 meters per second squared down? Why can't we choose negative 9.8 meters per second squared up? It's a question that at times can confuse students, and if you choose negative 9.8, you'll get the wrong answer. And so the answer is this. We have to be consistent in the question. Notice that the displacement is 450 meters down. To be consistent with the displacement vector, we choose the acceleration vector to also be down. That is 9.8 meters per second squared down. So how do we choose whether it's 9.8 or negative 9.8? You have to remember to be consistent. I often say to respect the vector. We look at the vector, this is a down vector, and all the vectors in the question therefore have to be down vectors. So we have to be consistent. If one vector is down, all the vectors have to be the down version of that quantity. All right, we're dropping pennies. Remember, we need three variables. Although it does not say that the initial speed is zero, one can assume that at the moment you see the word dropping, that means the initial speed, V1, is zero. Our goal is to find the final speed, V2. So, Here's our equations, here's our givens. Go ahead, take a look at these equations, see which one has these four variables. Well, it's that equation there. Notice that all the other equations have time in it, but notice from this list, time is not listed. The only equation that does not have time in it is this one here. 
And so there's our equation, v2 squared minus v1 squared equals 2a delta d. And substituting, initial speed is 0. Our acceleration is 9.8. Our displacement is 450. When you multiply these three numbers together, you get this number. And we end up with having to take the square root. And there's our answer. One considering significant digits. This is written to two significant digits. This is also written to two significant digits. And technically, when you're dropping something, the definition of dropping something is that the initial speed is zero. That's actually infinite significant digits. And so our final answer is 94 meters per second. Every answer needs a concluding sentence. The final speed of the penny prior to hitting the ground is 94 meters per second. Now, the one question you may be asking yourself is, when you drop something from 450 meters, is the acceleration truly constant while falling from that height? In other words, can we use this equation? Because remember I said the only time you can use this equation is if the acceleration is constant. Well, sadly, the answer is no. We cannot use this equation because when an object is falling, a few seconds into the drop, it'll begin to encounter drag or air resistance as it picks up speed. And in fact, the acceleration will actually eventually be zero. And it will hit a speed called terminal velocity or terminal speed. So at best, this 94 meters per second is a best case scenario where there is no drag. If anything, the speed with which it will hit the ground with will be significantly less due to drag. So technically, if we include drag in this question, you would need a computer simulation to figure out the answer. You couldn't even figure the answer out. So in physics, sometimes we make some basic assumptions, like there is no drag or no air resistance, to come up with some sort of answer. But the reality is, no, we could not use this equation in real life. All right, here's our next question. A ball is thrown off a building directly upwards with a speed of 43.2 kilometers per hour. Again, we're assuming no drag, no air resistance. After 6,250 milliseconds, calculate its velocity and displacement. So for starters, we're given our time in milliseconds. To convert milliseconds into seconds, we divide by 1,000. We're given initial speed. And immediately, the units, they just don't match. Kilometers per hour doesn't jive with seconds. And so we need to convert kilometers per hour into meters per second. Well, recall from a previous video, the conversion factor was 3.6. And so our initial speed is 12 meters per second up. Assuming no air resistance. That's very important in this question. That means it's going to be one of these values. So is it going to be 9.8 meters per second squared down or negative 9.8 meters per second squared up for our acceleration? That's the question. That's the whole point of this video today. Well, notice. Notice that it's thrown upwards, 12 meters per second up. And we said that we have to be consistent with our choice of vectors. So. If the object is being thrown upwards, 12 meters per second up, then to be consistent, we have to choose negative 9.8 meters per second squared up, not this value. So be consistent. So there's our acceleration that we're going to choose. And we have three variables, so that's great. We know the moment we have three variables, we can solve for another variable. Our goal is to get velocity and displacement. It doesn't matter which order we do it in. So we'll start off by getting the displacement. All right, there's our givens, there's our five equations. Pause the video right now. I'd like you to figure out which equation to use. Please pause the video. Okay, hopefully you gave this a try. 
That's the equation. Why? Well, we have time in it. We have initial speed. And we have acceleration. And we're solving for displacement. All right, so there's our equation we're going to use. Once again, please pause the video and see if you can solve this mathematically. Okay, hopefully you've tried. Here we go, substituting 12 for our V1, 6.25 for our time, negative 9.8 for our acceleration, and once again, 6.25. Multiplying through, this number equates 75, that number equates 191. Sometimes students forget to square. That's a common error. In addition, sometimes students forget that a negative multiplied by two positive numbers is a negative. So keep that in mind. Remember to square. Remember this is going to be negative. We end up with a very odd answer. It's a negative answer. Negative 116 meters up. Why up? Because we start off by saying V1 was up and acceleration is up. So a negative up answer. Now in terms of significant digits, two significant digits because of 9.8. Even though this has three significant digits and this also has three significant digits. So negative 120 meters up, what does that mean? Well, to understand this, we need a picture. So imagine this is our building. Very nice windows, aren't they? And this is not the scale. We're gonna throw this big ball off the building. We're launching it upwards at 12 meters per second. So what does it mean when the displacement is negative 120 meters? Well, it means this. After 6.25 seconds, the object is no longer going upwards, it's, it's starting to fall. In fact, it's fallen 120 meters below from where it started. That's what it means. Remember what displacement means. It's the difference between the position from where you started to where you finished. And this is telling us that negative 120 is telling us that it's below where it started. It's below its initial position. That's what 120 meters, negative 120 meters up means. It's below its original position. Our second task was to calculate the velocity after 6,250 milliseconds, or 6.25 seconds. That's the final speed. Once again, here are our variables. We're looking for the final velocity or the final speed. Please pause the video. All right, I hope you looked at all these equations to try to search for which equation you will use. It's this one here. Once again, please pause the video and try to figure out the math related to this question. All right, I hope you tried it. So substituting once again, 9.8, for the acceleration, 12 for our V1 and 6.25 for our time. Cross multiplying. So that's how we solve this. We have to cross multiply the 6.25. And we're going to multiply these two numbers in a moment. And we end up with that number there. To bring the 12 over, we have to add 12 to each side of the equation. And there's our final velocity. Hmm, again, it's a negative answer. And using significant digits, using two significant digits, because of 9.8, it's negative 49 meters per second up. Well, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Look at the picture. The ball was thrown upwards, and now it's below where it's been thrown from, so it must be heading downwards. That's what that means. It means that it's moving at a speed of 49 meters per second heading downwards. 
That's what a negative 49 meters per second up means. It means it's moving down at 49 meters per second. Now you may be asking yourself, how do we know that it's moving downwards after 6.25 seconds? And this is what I mean by really trying to understand what the unit means. In previous videos, we talked about acceleration. So what does negative 9.8 meters per second per second really mean? Well, the negative means the object's going to slow down. That makes sense. When you throw an object upwards, it has to slow down. In fact, when you write negative 9.8 meters per second per second, it means every one second, it's going to slow down by 9.8. So one second later, if you understand what I just said, then one second later, if you start out at 12, one second later, the speed has to be 2.2. 12, subtract 9.8. So after one second, you can see it's barely moving up anymore. Another second later, now two seconds later, well, we're going to subtract 9.8 again. And now, that negative means that it's not moving up anymore, it's now moving down. So within two seconds, the object's come to a stop that's reached its peak height and is now heading down. And by the third second, subtracting 9.8 from that number of 7.6, we get 17.4, negative, meaning it's heading downwards. So does it make sense? That after six seconds, it's moving at 49 meters per second? Yeah, it does. Because after three seconds, we know it's moving at negative 17 meters per second. So definitely after six seconds, it's, it's even going faster, falling downwards. All right. Here are two wonderful practice problems to reinforce what we just discussed. You could find a link to these practice problems and the full solution in the description for this video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.